Hey guys, and welcome to another compilation of some of the most hilarious and outrageous phonies that have stayed on Scrabble boards. Our first example here features none other than Chloe Fatsis, who was the star of a recent video I published on one of the greatest Scrabble comebacks of all time. Be sure to check that video out if you haven't yet, it'll be linked in the description below. But back to the task at hand here, Chloe is facing off against veteran expert Jeffrey Nelson, and as you may guess from the title of this video, Chloe opens the game with a phony of Betty's for 74 points. Now, this phony bingo got by Jeffrey, but it was very much not the first high-scoring phony that Chloe would get by in this game. And in fact, we're going to start two counters on the right-hand side of this screen. Counter number one will be for the total number of phonies Chloe gets by in this game, and counter number two will be for the total number of points Chloe has scored from invalid plays that stayed on the board. You'll see both of these counters going up very quickly. So here, Jeffrey responds with the word war, getting rid of the W and the U on his rack. And Chloe's got a decent rack here. There are no valid bingos. However, she does play a bingo of Naumina's through this E, which scores 90 points as it's on a double-double. Now, Naumina is a word without the S, but that is a plural of Naumanon. So Naumina's would be sort of a double plural. Uh, you're pluralizing with an S something that's already a plural, so it is not a valid word. However, it's a very reasonable word that uh, certainly resembles several valid words. So it sneaks by Jeffrey, and Chloe is now up to two phonies, and all 164 of her points up to this point have come from invalid words. Jeffrey responds with va, getting rid of another w as well as his v, and Chloe does take a brief hiatus from phonying on this turn, playing o for 39 points. Jeffrey responds with cud, and Chloe does once again not phony, playing off her F and her H for a nice score of 37. However, this phonying hiatus would be very brief, as on the next turn, after Jeffrey plays Vac, Chloe responds with the word rot. Now, wait a minute, you may ask. Rot is, of course, a word, so why is this a phony? Well, if you look at rot, she has also made two, two other words, U-R and M-O. And you are is not a word. It is a word in the International Collins Dictionary. However, it is very much not a word in the American NWL Dictionary, which this game was played in. So while this phony didn't score nearly as much as her phony bingos, and it was only two letters long, it is still very much a phony. So the Chloe phony counter goes up to three, and the number of points that Chloe has scored from phonies goes up by 13. Jeffrey would respond by dropping his V for six points. And in this position, Chloe does have a valid bingo of Intrepid from the I in Betty's, which would score 86 points as it reaches the triple word score. However, she overlooks that line, instead playing the word under tip from the U in O, which scores also pretty well. It scores 80 points. Uh, however, under tip, as you probably aren't surprised to hear, is not a word. So uh, there you have it, folks. That is Chloe's fourth phony in the first six turns of the game, and her phony counter uh, goes up to four, and the number of points that Chloe has scored from phonies that stayed on the board in the first six turns of the game is up to 257. So if we look at her total score on the top right, it's 333. So that means that only 76 out of Chloe's 333 points in the first six turns of this game have come from valid plays. So if you take out all the invalid plays, she'd actually be losing this game here. But if you include everything, she's up by over 250. So truly crazy stuff. Uh, it did turn out that this would be the last phony Chloe would play in this game, but she would go on to win by a very large margin. Now, moving on to our next example, we have two top experts squaring off, Charles Reinke and Ori Swift. And Charles has gotten off to a very good start this game. He's already up over 180 points, and we're still quite early. Ori is struggling with another difficult rack, and he comes up with a very clever idea here. He sees he has the word hand on his rack, and he plays it in front of the word forged already on the board to make the 10-letter word hand forged, scoring 38 points by means of the double word score. Now, it turns out that hand forged is not a word, but it's an extremely plausible word and a very difficult one to challenge. It's extremely plausible because there are a lot of similar adjectives starting with hand that are valid. I've listed a couple on the screen, handmade, hand sewn, and hand woven. So given all of these are valid, it's very reasonable to believe that hand forged would also be valid. And it's extremely difficult to have the confidence to challenge this because the majority of players, including top experts, don't study 10-letter words just because they so rarely come up in actual games. 
So having never studied this and presumably knowing some of the shorter hand words that are valid, it would be very, very difficult for Charles to make this challenge. And he does indeed allow this to stay on the board. Charles would go on to win this game pretty convincingly, but still a very creative effort from Ori to try to open the board back up and get himself back into this game. Now in our next example here, we have uh, top player Joey Malik facing off against the late expert Lester Schoenbrunn, and it's a pretty tight game. Joey's got a, a decent rack here. He's got the C and the K, which go pretty well together. He's uh, He's got some good plays. He could, for instance, play the word Cusk, C-U-S-K, through this S in axes, which scores 30 points, keeps a nice A-E-N-T leave, and it doesn't give Lester a lot of good options. However, Joey finds something better. He finds the bingo of nutcakes through this S in axes. And uh, this scores 80 points. However, it is not a word. Uh, again, a very creative and plausible phony. There are uh, a lot of words ending in cakes, such as uh, oat cakes, that uh, resemble nut cakes. So it's uh, quite reasonable to believe that nut cakes would be valid. However, it uh, turns out that it is not. Uh, but it does get by Lester, and uh, Joey would indeed go on to win this game. So very creative play by Joey that paid off quite well. Now, in this next example, we have top player Jackson Smiley facing against the uh, late legend David Gibson, who has won two North American Scrabble championships. And uh, in this position, Jackson has a, a pretty tough rack. He's got a lot of one-pointers that don't go too well together. Uh, however, he does find the bingo of Soris, T-S-O-R-R-I-S, which he hooks with bogs. Uh, however, this is actually not a word, and there are a huge number of acceptable spellings of the word Soros or Tsuris. I'll list all of them on the screen here. And uh, this is one of the very few that happens to, to not be valid. So Tsuris is one of those words that has uh, tons of acceptable spellings in Scrabble, and it just happens to have a few that often will come up on racks that are not valid. But in practice, keeping track of all of these different spellings and which ones are valid and which ones are not is, uh, is quite a difficult task. And uh, just to show how difficult a task this is, uh, David Gibson, who's again one of the legends of the game, one of the greatest players of all time, and a two-time North American champion, lets this stay on the board, and uh, Jackson ends up getting away with a very rare phony against David Gibson. Now, in this next example, it's uh, once again Jackson Smiley, and he's playing against another legend of Scrabble, Joe Edley, who has won three North American Scrabble championships. And... Jackson's rack, you may notice, looks oddly familiar from the last game. He's got that same I-O-R-R-S-S-T rack, and you guessed it, guys. He once again plays Soros uh, as an intentional phony, and he notes in his comment here, he got away with this against David Gibson, and it's a very difficult challenge. So he's like, well, I got away with it against one Scrabble legend. Why not try it against another? And indeed, it works. Uh, Joe Edley here lets this stay on the board. Uh, Joe would go on to win this game. But Jackson does still manage to cut some spread using this phony. And as crazy as it sounds, guys, we're not done yet. Here, Jackson is playing against our newest North American champion, Josh Sokol. And he's got uh, a very oddly familiar rack. This time, one of his tiles is a blank. But his, uh, his other tiles all are the same from the previous couple slides. He's got I-O-R-R-S-S blank. And you guessed it. He once again plays Soros this time hooking DAG to make DAGs and scoring 77 points. And once again, this gets by Josh. So that is now not one, not two, but three times that Jackson has gotten the same phony by a current or former North American Scrabble champion. So truly wild stuff. And I, uh, I hope if nothing else, this example maybe makes, uh, makes some folks feel better about certain uh, phonies that they have let stay on the board because we just saw the same word get by, uh, once again, three different current or former North American Scrabble champions. So uh, pretty crazy stuff, and uh, that just really, I think, does go to show how difficult it can be to keep different words straight, especially words that have so many different valid spellings. Now, speaking of words that have very many different valid spellings, we have a, another prime example on this board, and that is the interjection arg here spelled as A-A-R-G-H, and appearing right next to the red arrow that I just drew. I'm going to list all of the valid spellings of ARG on the screen, and you'll see that they are A-R-G-H, A-A-R-G-H, A-A-R-R-G-H, and A-A-R-R-G-H-H. Conspicuously missing from this list is A-A-R-G-H-H. 
Now, Josh Sokol, the player featured here, was quite aware of this fact. And he's playing against another very strong player and past North American Scrabble champion, Matthew Tunnicliffe. Matthew has been featured in many of my videos on phonies, but in this rare situation, Matthew is actually on the receiving end of the phony. In this position, Josh plays the bingo of Halitus, H-A-L-I-T-U-S, for 106 points. And Halitus is a valid bingo, however, Josh hooks an H onto ARG to make this one invalid spelling, A-A-R-G-H-H. -H. And as he notes here, it's very difficult to challenge this word because all of these different spellings of ARG are valid, and it just so happens that because of the randomness and intricacy of the Scrabble Dictionary, this one spelling happens to not be valid. And there's really no rhyme or reason here. There's no good reason why ARG shouldn't be able to be spelled like this if it can be spelled all these other ways. It's just kind of one of those things that you have to have memorized or have seen from practice. And uh, this one gets by Matthew. It's a very difficult challenge also to make at this point in the game, since Matthew is uh, is now down a little bit, and if he challenges and loses his turn, Josh could quickly run away with this game. So Matthew decides to let this play go. Uh, Matthew would go on to win this game, as he had a high-scoring response of Meow for 47 points. So that may have factored into Matthew's decision to let this play go. But in any case, a uh, very creative play by Josh, giving himself an uh, outside chance to steal this game, and at the bare minimum, like in this case, cutting a lot of point spread from his loss. Now, this final example here features none other than myself. Uh, this was taken from a tournament I played just a couple weeks ago. It was the uh, Wigpo World Cup in Albany, New York. And it was pretty late in the tournament, and I'm playing against uh, expert player Matty Kamen, who I've played many times before. And in this position, I was, uh, I was in some trouble. I'd been playing off uh, a couple tiles at a time for several turns, uh, keeping a very good leave like AERST or EERST, and I simply hadn't been able to draw a bingo. And uh, on my last turn, I had just played EW, which you can see over here uh, on the bottom right, for 15 points, keeping AERST, hoping to draw a bingo hooking U, EWE, on the end column. And uh, I failed to do that. I drew OF out of the bag, and this seven-letter rack of AEFORST uh, does not make any valid bingos, of which I was well aware. And instead of uh, fishing again for 15 points, I, uh, I decided that I'm down 80 points. I really need to bingo right now to get myself uh, back in this game, and uh, that's exactly what I did. Uh, instead of fishing, I decided to play the word arrow shift as a nine-letter bingo uh, through this HI on the board, making two overlaps of uh, SO and US. Uh, and at first you might think, wow, that is a, a really brilliant play. It's, uh, it's amazing I was able to find this, uh, this nine-letter bingo that, uh, that made multiple overlaps. Uh, but you guessed it, guys. This is not a word. And uh, I was very aware of the fact that this was not a word when, uh, when I played it. But like I said, I figured at, uh, at this point in the game, I'm down 80 points. I really don't want to play for 15 or 18 points again. And uh, my best chance to get back into this game was to, to phony and try to, to get away with a 70-point bingo. And uh, that would get me much closer to Maddie's score. And uh, this is exactly what I did. And uh, Maddie did hold the play for a few seconds, but ultimately... Let it stay on the board, and uh, yeah, that's how I, I got away with this uh, pretty crazy phony nine-letter bingo, and I would actually go on to win this game later on after uh, bingoing out in the end game. So pretty crazy stuff, and uh, that is the last example I have for you guys today. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this video, and hopefully too some of the examples, uh, especially. Uh, Jackson getting away with a uh, Saurus against three different North American Scrabble champions made you guys uh, feel a little bit better maybe about your own games and some of the phonies that you've played and uh, let's stay on boards. It, uh, it happens to the best of us. It really does. And, uh, and yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, please uh, feel free to send me any fun phonies you've come across, either that you've gotten away with or seen other players get away with. I uh, love, love making these videos and I, uh, they always seem to be some of my most popular ones, so please keep the suggestions coming, and uh, appreciate all the support, and I will see you guys soon for the next one. Thanks, guys, and have a good one. Bye-bye.